Let's play the Binding of Isaac demo by N. McMillan because he's awesome. And Florian. I couldn't read your name! Crap. Well, let's watch the intro. Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac's mom heard a voice from above. Your son has become corrupted by sin. He needs to be saved. I will do my best to save him, my lord, Isaac's mother replied, rushing into Isaac's room, removing all that was evil from his life. Again, the voice called to her. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee, Isaac's mother replied as she locked Isaac in his room away from the evils of the world. One last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I'd asked, but I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything, Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son, Isaac, will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> so happy! That was one messed up kid. This is the demo for a full game you can get on Steam. It's just five bucks. I got it myself. Oops. There we go. The credits, the games by Edmund McMillan, who's the he's the guy who made um, Super Meat Boy and Gish and a bunch of awesome games. And Florian Himsel, who I honestly don't know. Voiced by Mattias Bozy, who's I guess that narrator there for that awesome intro. Music is by Danny Baranowski. And you can click all these names and stuff to go to their respective web pages and such. Sound effects by Jorian Fair. There's some options that we can't use because it's the demo. So let's just get right to it. We are Isaac because you can't play the other characters in the uh, demo. You unlock the other characters and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you unlock while playing. Move around with the WADS keys. Use the arrows to attack, and you shoot tears to travel in a bit of a weird arc. They just kind of magically drop off at that point. Use a bomb, but uh, I won't do that because they're used instantly. We don't have an item to use with space. And everything is randomly generated, so that's really cool. There's a screaming face in the middle of the room. Ah, screaming blood at us. Things are going to scream blood at you. That's... That's just gonna happen. We got a nickel. Excellent. And a slithery heart that... I like that the hearts, like, slither around the room. But we can't pick it up. You only have three hearts by default. Ah, more screaming blood faces. There's gonna be lots of screaming blood faces in this. There's a whole bunch of enemies. They're all really messed up. Yeah, they're all pretty awesome. Something a friend of mine noted on Facebook, uh, one of the things he considers really creepy about it is the familiarity with the game. That you might notice it's very much based on Zelda's layouts. You've got the four doors in the exact same positions as in the original Zelda. But also, many of the enemies 
are based on familiar game enemy archetypes like uh, whiz robes and whatever, like Zelda enemies and such. Well, they're all really messed up and do stuff like that. Yeah, the game's fairly hard, by the way. It's like really quite hard, but you get items that can make it easier. And interestingly, as you unlock achievements, you unlock the ability to get better items, so I guess the game gets easier as you play on. I haven't played it that much. I haven't been playing much of anything that much, but the game looks really sweet, so I will probably at least be trying to complete it at least once. I don't know if I'll do the full game on camera. That is a bomb that's going to explode. Do not pick up the blinking bombs. You can pick up the... Sometimes enemies drop bombs that you can use, and as you might have noticed, bombs blow up these normal brick, these bricks here. So sometimes you can use bombs to get items that you couldn't otherwise access, but uh, I haven't needed to do that yet. Stupid things. Items. That crown on the menu thing means you get something. We got lemon mishap. I peed. Yay. Okie dokie. Wait, boss room. Crap. I wasn't. I did not mean to go into the boss room yet. This is Larry Jr. He's one of the bosses. There are two of him. I guess. I did not mean to go into the freaking boss room already, but whatever. You can always tell the boss room because of the skull on the map and the door is a bit different, but I had forgotten about that last part. The interesting thing about this boss is that it moves everywhere and you have to break poop to continue on a path. You pretty much just avoid this boss and it moves really randomly. This is one of the simpler bosses. It's fitting for it being the first boss in the game. The bosses are random though, so you're not always going to get this guy's first boss. You probably want him as a first boss though. The first bosses. Yeah, as you kill the segments, I guess. You'll eventually kill the main snake too. Ow. So just bomb carry on. Until he does that. You want to keep a fair distance from him, but sometimes. Stop being behind the poop walls. It's gross and it makes it hard to kill you. I don't like either of those things. Definitely don't appreciate gross things. He's about to die though. Also, I know I've seen that angry face. Got a spoon! Yeah! Speed up! The caves won. Mommy gave me a box. It contained food. Some other kid. Thanks to the spoon, we got we got our ass beat pretty much. And with the entire spoon. We got beaten with the entire spoon. I don't even know how that works. So we got the imprint of the entire spoon on the back of our head. But we move faster, so that's. Ah, these guys are like pain elementals, but basically they spit out flies. They're not nearly as annoying as lost souls. I don't know the names of any of the enemies, so I'm gonna call these maggot vibes. I don't really have vibes. I get hives sounds like a good name. Some of the flies blink red and some of them don't. Maybe some of them, maybe the blink ones are just tougher. I don't know. Also, you kind you have a limited auto map. So it maps the rooms next to whatever rooms you enter. Also, sometimes items- oh, whoa, it's a- it's flying blood at you. It's 
Sometimes you'll see a central platform like this one there, and sometimes it has a, yeah, it has an item on it. And he can't, to my knowledge, get to it. Maybe one of the other characters can jump or something. Oh, screaming faces. The way to beat these guys is just continue traveling in the same clockwise or counterclockwise place. Just never head back and keep moving. Oh, and you might have noticed your space item recharges very slowly. I've never found one that's very helpful yet. There's one where you fire your laser on. That impressive, especially for the long way. Figured it's basically a mine that you're in. Seems to do okay damage though. That is the boss. We're not gonna go to the stupid boss again. Hey, it's a shop! Hey, Mr. Corpse Man. Ow, fire hurts! Son of a bitch. Got an injection. Oh, the ladder, that's right. There's one of those crown rooms on every map that I've seen so far. So I'm trying to always get to those. That's why I'm probably gonna die this next boss. I think there's a limit to the amount of flies that you get the same time, so if the screen's full of flies, they probably won't. Enemy shots travel in an arc too, but I wouldn't depend on being in the arc way, I would just freaking touch it. Not a 3D game, so the 3D-ness of the arc is kind of odd to be used to. Reasonably consistent, though, so... When your shots kind of travel in the direction you were last moving. There. It's sort of complicates aiming, but it also means you can... If you know what you're doing, you can aim your shots a bit. We got the fool. You can press Q to use your current card. I don't know what this one does. But I don't know what any of them do. I hate these maggots. They chase after you. They see you. Don't let them corner you. Or they'll eat your face. In fact, there's one boss that just spawns a crap ton of these. Here is the crown. Get a Bible! Yay. I want to know what it does. I don't want to. We're, gonna... We're just going to go to the boss. We're going to be more on. We're going to see what our special item and our card do. They probably won't help us very much. Maybe it's an easy boss and we'll have an easy time. <laughs> this is kind of why I just wanted to show the demo. Oh crap, it's this stupid thing. Oh, oh. I tried recording this twice before, by the way. Audio messed up both times. Your diary. Today I died. Me. I was killed by this thing in some cave. I leave all that I own to my gag guppy. Spoon. Bible. Card. 
cool stuff. Goodbye, cruel world. Hugs and kisses. which is cheap. It's got some numbers. Look at those numbers. Those are big numbers. You like games with big numbers, right? This game has some big numbers. It's got 20 plus bosses. That's a big number. 110 items. That's a very big number. 11 plus endings. 15 plus hours of gameplay. A pony! And a giant fetus monster. Everybody likes giant fetus monsters. I, I did a survey. Everyone likes them. And here lipped blob abominations, it's got those too. It's got everything that you want in one game, so just buy it.